In this video, we'll start cracking the database. If you remember earlier in the series, I said that you should always try to understand data structures before you try to understand logic. To take the principle further, you should try to understand data before code, if you have a choice. Now we know that the game stores a lot of information somewhere about all of the products and other game items. Our goal now is to figure out where it's stored, how it's loaded, and how the game represents the data in memory. We'll start by searching the files on disk for the name of a known piece of information. For instance, one of the products in the game is citric acid. So let's search for that. We use the command line tool findString which searches the uh, files for a string. The slash m option tells it to print just the names of matching files rather than all the data. And uh, slash s tells it to search subdirectories. Now the name appears in a lot of files, all the tutorials, scenarios, and saved games, as well as this game set one std.set file. Since scenarios, saved games, and tutorials are only loaded when you're using them, I assume, I think this one std.set file is our target. So let's open that in a hex editor. Right away we see lots of interesting information. Thankfully they didn't compress the file or else FindString wouldn't have found it and it'd be much harder to figure it out. If we couldn't find it, we could try opening files with interesting names and see if we can spot any known headers such as pkzip headers. A lot of games these days use zip files. In the worst case, we just have to go back to the code and figure it out from there. But a tool like Procmon can tell you which files a program is accessing, so that may be another way to track down the file. Procmon is released by Assistant Tools, by the way, which was later acquired by Microsoft. Now scrolling through the file, you can see that there's quite a bit of different types of information in here. For instance, this is different from this, which is different from this, etc. You can tell this just by the way uh, it's formatted here. And you often see that uh, it forms um, lines or blocks where these things go in a certain line. This implies a certain uh, width of each row, so it so it lines up a certain way. Since this shows 19 bytes, you know, th this uh, forms this line which implies each of them is 18 bytes, which, which uh, or 19 bytes actually, which you can see down here. So just by looking at the way things are lined up, you can visually gauge the distance between items sometimes. Anyway, usually data files contain headers, which are, which are pieces of information at the top of the file which describe how to read the rest of the file. Occasionally they contain footers not very often, and that's where the information is stored at the end. Now let's start by looking at the top of the file. Here we see strings, firm, fbuild, job, tut, item, item class, etc. And these seem like the names of types of information. Often at the very beginning of the file you'll see a magic number which identifies the file type, or you'll see a version number or something. You won't necessarily be able to figure out what all the bytes in the header are for, but when you examine the code that loads the file, you can see what it does with them. Now if you imagine you're writing a program to parse this file, it needs to know where to find the information. In general, either information is fixed width or it's variable width. If it's fixed width, then the program just knows how wide it is, but if it's variable width, then there must be some data that tells how much to read. Since files are usually read from beginning to end, the field that tells how much to read almost always comes in front of the data. So the program can read the size and then read that many items. Often programs mix the two together, for instance a variable number of items, each of which is a fixed size. So one of the first things to try when you see this kind of thing is to measure the distance between items and see whether it's fixed or variable. And how, we, how do we know where these start and stop? You don't really need to know, you just need to identify one field within the item and jump to that same field in the next item. So if we measure from this name to this name, you can see down here that it's 13 bytes. 
if you look here to here, it's again 13 bytes. And to the next, 13. Also 13. And 13 again, and 13 again, and 13 again. And I'm not going to measure all of them. But it seems like they're all 13 bytes long. So it appears to be fixed width data. This means that there must be a value somewhere that tells the program how many items to read. It could be hard-coded in the program or calculated, but usually it's not. And since usually the count comes before the items, that leaves only these two bytes, which are not obviously part of any item, although they could be. Um, so, but let's look at them. So they have a value of 22, considered as a little Indian integer. And let's count these. So. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So there are 22 of these strings, and this number is 22. And that's almost certainly not a coincidence. So let's start writing this down. So we'll open something like Notepad, and um, create a small st structure definition that uh, helps us understand the file a bit better. I'm calling these tables since they seem to contain types of information and not the information themselves. Now, let's look at these items individually. It seems like they all start with a name. But it's not clear exactly how long each name is. So this is f four bytes, and then it's followed by some nulls. Actually, we can use a feature of Hex Workshop to make this a bit easier. So we can load a color mapping that de-emphasizes the zero bytes so that we can see where the non-zero bytes start and end more easily. So if we look... Uh, Actually, one easy way to find the maximum size is to look for the longest column and see how long that is. So it seems tied for 8, 8, 8. So the name must be at least 8 characters. So let's write that down. So after the name, so after 8 characters, what's next? We have a 0 byte here and select 8 characters, it's followed by 0, again 0, another 0. So it seems like um, another 0. And let's see, 0, ah, 0, 0, 0. Seems like um, I think this zero is actually the null terminator, since the game is written in C and C strings are terminated by a zero. I think that the name is actually there are actually nine bytes reserved for the name, of which eight can be used for characters, and the last is always zero. So that leaves four bytes that we need to figure out. So if we look at this here, it can be interpreted as individual bytes, 45 and 1, followed by two zeros, or as a 16-bit number, which has a value of 301. So this is three, say, maybe 301, and 207, and, or maybe 1743, and this is maybe 50, 218, or 13,000. Um, actually, they seem to be increasing. So 15,000, 20,000, 21,000, 21.9, 22, 38, 40. So it seems that this is a number at least 16 bits long, probably. So we have 54, 55, 
56, whoops, and 57. Actually, this is three bytes now. 66,000. So this is probably a four-byte integer. And 69, 78, 81, and that's the last, the last item. So <coughs> if you look down here, the, the size of the file is 82,685 bytes. And these numbers increased from very small up to about 82,000 bytes. So I think it's a good guess that this is a, an offset within the file. We don't know for sure, but let's start looking at them. First is 301, and the second is 1743. So if we go to position 301, we see some stuff, then some strings separated by about 32 bytes, and then we see some other, a large number of, well, some rows, I guess. It looks to me like these are column names and this is row data. But let's check the next one, that was 1743. So here, again, we have these columns, and then it looks like the data. And the third table is at, Thirteen oh one nine. And the same kind of thing. Apparently columns and apparently data. So I guess we can be pretty sure that this is the offset within the file where the table is stored. So now let's look where these numbers point to, where these offsets point to. So Actually, there seems to be some extra stuff between the last um, table header and the start of the next and the start of the first actual table. It's also 13 bytes, as you can see. And hey, this offset is uh, 82,685 bytes, which is the same as the length of the file. So it seems like after the 22 table headers, as we call them. There's a, another one which is empty, or has an empty name, and contains the length of the file. So my guess as to why they do that is so that they can calculate the size of any one item by taking the difference between one item and the next. And so they don't have to special case the very last item. I guess they add a blank one which just has the length of the file. That's my guess anyway. Anyway, immediately following that is the first table at offset 301. Now there seem to be a lot of bytes here before the first bit of text, unlike here where there are only two. So this will be a bit trickier to figure out. And just trying to look at these numbers uh, won't be very helpful until we've gathered until we know what to look for. So let's uh, do some measuring as we did before. So we measure from one column to the next, and we see that it's 32 bytes, and again 32, 32. So the columns seem to be 32 um, bytes long. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine columns in this table. Or maybe ten. No, nine columns. So and let's also measure the rows. So we'll go from one T11 to another T11. It says uh, 40 bytes. So we should look for these numbers, 9, 30, um, well, 9 and 40, basically. So here's a 9. It's possible that this one byte represents the number of columns. Um, this is a 28, but here's a 40. So this might be the length of uh, the rows. Let's check by 
looking at the other table. I'm going to add a bookmark so we can come back here easily. So we thought this was the number of columns and that this was the size of the rows, 86 bytes. <coughs> so let's count the columns first. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, it's definitely more than 7. So apparently this is not the column count. And in fact, I don't see any bytes equal to 10 anywhere in here. But let's measure the rows. So go from, say, retail to retail. And it actually it is 86 bytes. So I think it's pretty obvious then that this, probably 4 bytes, is the length of the uh, is the length of each row. So let's write that down. I guess we should rename this since this is really the table header. This is more like a file descriptor. In both cases, the bytes row 301, and then there's some stuff we don't know about. And then we have, actually, what was the offset? 10 bytes until this. <coughs> All right. Now after the row length, oops, there just seems to be a bunch of zeros until the first column. So well, let's gather some more information, like how many rows are there? And I actually don't want to count these, but we can calculate it. So we know the table is, let's use a calculator, the table is 1743 minus 301 equals 1442 bytes because that's the distance between the two tables. And then we want to subtract the header, which is from here up until the first, up until the row data starts. It looks like 320 bytes. That leaves us with 1122. We know each row is 40 bytes. So that gives us 28 rows and it looks like two extra bytes. So each row is 28 bytes long. Um, I mean, sorry, there are 28 rows. And then there is an extra two bytes we haven't accounted for somewhere. Let's look through these again. Actually, here is the number 28. Um, and let's check the second table as well. We know the table after it starts at 13019. So... length of the second table is this. Let me subtract the size of the of the header. This is 352. And this row size is 86. So there are 127 rows and two extra bytes again. So uh, let's take a look. So here, 127 in the same place. So it seems that this is uh, the number of rows. Now it's possible that this number might not have existed. And um, there are other ways that a program could count the number of rows, say. One way is that it could uh, have some kind of character at the end or something that lets it know when to stop reading. And another way is that it could take the size and just calculate it the way we did. Divide, it, divide the table size by the row length. Now I don't think that they have some delimiter at the end because that means they would have to read the entire table um, to in order to find out the number of rows. And that seems unlikely for a database. However, 
they just store it here. But if they didn't store it here, we might assume that they're calculating it. But anyway, now we just need to figure out the rest of these bytes. And we still don't know what this 0301 means. But it seems to be... Let's check the some other tables. 03010901B O three O one seems to be an O nine one V again. I don't know what they're what it's about. You know, it could be a, could be like a version number, it could be could be the O three means is a type file type database and O one is a version of the database. We don't really know. But uh it's not important to figure out what every byte in the file means. What we really need want to do is uh just figure out enough that we could, in theory, write a program to pull all the data out of the database. It's because really what we want to do is understand this file so that we can... Um, it'll help us understand the code when we try to decompile it. Now there's one more thing to figure out, which is how does a game know when to stop reading headers and start reading rows? Unlike uh, the files at the beginning, there doesn't seem to be enough space All right, there doesn't seem to be any space to fit an empty row an empty co empty column in here. So it's not like they read the columns until they find an empty one. Um, there is this 0D byte. I could read and maybe read until they find this 0D byte. If we look here, the last one is also suffixed by a 0D byte. And also this one. So that's one. It's a good possibility that the they could be reading columns until they just see this zero D byte. But anyway, let's see if we can figure out figure out these other unknown bytes. So. <coughs> I don't know what these are, but they seem to be this 091Bs duplicated in other tables, including tables with much different sizes, different number of columns. So it doesn't seem like this is really necessary to figure out how to parse a particular table. So we know what this is. We know what this is. So we want to find out what these two bytes are. So we could treat them as separate bytes, 65 and 1. And it doesn't strike me as anything. Actually, if you look, this is 321, and previously we subtracted 320, we took 320 as the header size. Let's look at the table 2. This is 353, and we measured 352 as the header size. So actually, I think this 0D byte actually is part of the header. And so if we measure from here to here, we get 353, which matches this. And check again in this third table. From here to here is 289. And if we look here, we also see 289. So it would seem that here it stores the size of the header or the offset from the offset of the row data within the table. I think that's that's enough. Um, that's all we can really get out of this first 32 bytes. But now let's look inside each of these column descriptions. So these are 
32 bytes long, and again they start with a string. So let's first again do what we did before to try to find the longest string. So this is um, 13 characters. Is that right? No, 10 characters. And this is 10 characters. And you can see that each one has like a C after it, or in this case an N. And here's a C. So I think this C is not part of the name, so we can measure up to the C. And we see 11 bytes and 10 for characters, and then this is a 0. If we look in front of all these C's, we again see zeros. So I think again, um, we have a name. So after the name, <coughs> we have this, a C, 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 N, N, C. And then after that, there's something that's different for each column. I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that maybe this is the type of the column. For instance, um, character or text and number. Well, let's look at the next table. So here we have text, text, uh, text, number, 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 number. If we look at the rows, you have text, 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 a um, bunch of numbers, and again, text, 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 bunch of numbers. So it seems that this is probably the type. I don't know if there are any other types besides character and number, but that's all we've seen so far. And so after the type, what do we have? We have a number, 1, 2, 10, 30, 31, 32, 33, as you can see these are increasing, 37, and 39. Now the rows are 40 bytes. So <coughs> Good. Um, so, hmm. Let's look at the next numbers as well. So after that, there's another number. One. Um, one eight. Twenty. One one. one, etc. Uh, four in this case, and two. Actually, I think there's a pattern here. So if you look at these numbers, what were they? One, two, ten, thirty or something, and then we had one, eight, twenty, etc. So one plus one is two, 2 plus 8 is 10, 10 plus 20 is 30. Whoops. Let's see. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 8 is 10. 8 plus 20 is 30. 30 plus 1 is 31. 32. 33 plus 4 is 37. So I think we've identified a pattern here. So it, it was seen fairly clear that this is the offset into the row, and this is the length of the column.
So the first column, the class, would be at offset 1, since this is a start, plus 1, and then it's one character long, so it's like class A. And then the firm type is 8 characters long, and starts here. And in fact, you can see that this is 8, and it matches up nicely with the next field, so that the firm type would be 8Q. And then the name would be 20 characters long, and and he, here you can see it's 20 characters and headquarters and then we have um, added which is T and then Terra mask which is uh, 1 adjoins road 1 I think job index is at 33 doesn't seem to be anything here. Um, it's four bytes long. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it's a num it's a number, but it's right aligned rather than being left aligned. Apparently that's one difference between numbers and text, I suppose. And then the job filter type was where the job count was also one, right? No, it was two. Two, so that would be sixteen. And then finally and the filter type is 1, which is 1. And then we're at the next row. It seems like the first and last bytes of the row are spaces. Aren't they're not used, at least not in this table. Anyway, let's write down what we know so far. So after the type, there's the offset and the length. And what's after that? So after the length, we just have zeros until the next column. And um, again, zeros, zeros. And it seems like, seems like there's nothing after that except, I guess, uh, padding. Or it could mean something, but in, in this table it's not used. So it's apparently not needed to parse this table. Let's look at the next table just to check. Now this is also all, all zeros. So this is 20 bytes, and the whole total is 32, I think. Should be 12 bytes of padding after each. Yeah, 12. And this is also 32 bytes. So 4, 8, 10, 14. I think there are 18 bytes of padding there. And the rows don't have any fixed format, it's decided by the columns. But I think we have enough information now that uh, we'll have a much easier time understanding the code that loads this database. But before we do that, I'd like to show off one feature of Hex Workshop that I think is pretty neat. So if you take this kind of description, you can actually load this into Hex Workshop. It'll parse the file data into a visible structure. Here, I'll, I'll do that now. I'll be right back. So I did that, and really it's just plain C code to describe the structures. So it's direct transformation for what we already had. Now you can use this to, say, add a structure. And It'll actually parse the structure here, so you can get the file count, each of the files has its name and offset and whatnot. And at the table, say, you could um, on a table header, it automatically, well, based on the formulas you put in here, 
date offset divided by 2 minus 31, it figures out the right number of columns, parses them all into this structure. I think that's pretty neat. And it's one of the reasons I prefer this hex editor. Alright, so that took a while, but reverse engineering is slow. Next time, we'll get to the database loading code.